if you're a CEO, there's a lot you have to think about, obviously. But your biggest obligation to your company, your employees, your customers, your shareholders, is to make sure that the company has a long-term plan for success. And what Mosaic allows you to do is evolve with the market. That's the fundamental thing. It allows you to connect the dots between all of your different departments, break down all those silos, but to do it in a way that as those silos change, as you adopt new applications, as people change, as organizations change, you're able to adjust your data models, right? Your business models on the fly. Importantly, it also gives you a lot of independence and agility from a technology perspective, right? So if you think about the hyperscalers, right? Today you've got, you know, AWS and you've got Azure, you've got Google, you know, GCP. Five years from now, there might be somebody else. Or one of them might run away with uh, a technology that's brand new and another one might fall behind. And if you've chosen right now the one perhaps that's falling behind, that might be okay right now. But as technology evolves, you might need to move from one to the other. You might need to move from one application to another. You might need to use your data for all kinds of new scenarios, whether it's data monetization, new applications, new scenarios, new operational endeavors. So if you're the CEO, you need a data infrastructure that is as flexible and plastic as possible. That's why we called it Mosaic. It's like all these little tiles that you can compose together to form the picture that you need today, but recompose in the future to form the picture that you need a year from now, three years from now, five years from now, uh, for wherever your business may take you. If you cannot do that, if it is not plastic, if it's not recomposable, you end up pretty stuck and you can't, you can't really change fast enough for your business. You know, every enterprise is made up of a bunch of different databases, a bunch of different applications. And what we've seen over the years is that end users have their own tool of choice, right? They might want to use Power BI, they might want to use Tableau. Of course, we love it when they use strategy. We're starting to see a lot of people responsible for the data infrastructure of their companies also trying to provide trusted, governed data uh, to AI scenarios, right? So they want to enable AI in all their different departments. And so the question that they always ask is, you know, how do we achieve that? Do we put everything in one gigantic database? But, you know, if you've been in the industry long enough, you know that getting all your data into one giant database or one giant data lake or data warehouse, whatever you want to call it, isn't really a realistic end goal. People realize that they need this data fabric. They need this common way of governing and managing and defining their business, but they needed it to be fully open. They need to be open on the bottom in other words, run on any cloud, support any application, run any database, and open at the top where they could access it from any tool, including SQL-based tools or agentic AI or whatever it might be, to take some of the technology that we've had, enhance it with AI, enhance it with even more openness, uh, and provide what we now call the world's first universal intelligence layer. It's more than just a product. It's really a new philosophy of what we call freedom as a service. When you think about the data landscape, everything starts with underlying data storage, right? So you've got databases that store data, whether it's data warehouse or data lake. On top of that, you need some level of business definition and security, right? And oftentimes those are called semantics. And what we fundamentally believe is that semantic layer, what we call the universal intelligence layer, needs to be separate from both the underlying data storage and the consumption layer. If you model your business logic in either of the other two layers, you're not able to change in the future. Let's say you wanna go from Snowflake to Databricks or from Databricks to Google BigQuery. If your semantic layer is actually in the database, you can't do that because you need to move the data, you need to remodel the semantic layer, and then everything built on top of that needs to also change because you've now changed your semantic layer. By separating that out into our mosaic universal intelligence layer, it now gives you freedom as a service, right? Because you now have your business logic and your security modeled in this layer. 
Underneath, you've got the raw data in your different databases. You can move from one to the other and just repoint the semantic layer. It also allows you to move from cloud to cloud because some of these database vendors and data warehouses are cloud specific. Like the Fabric stuff is for Azure. Redshift runs on AWS. Uh, GBQ runs on the Google Cloud Platform. And so if you want to move between these things, you can just repoint our universal intelligence layer and everything downstream also continues to run as well. So you get this massive freedom at the cloud level, at the database level, and at the consumption level as well. And so we see this as providing really freedom on both ends. The word universal semantic layer, or the phrase, is being applied to a lot of different things. It's important to educate yourself on, like, what, what do we mean and what, what is the right definition of it? You've got data virtualization players that also kind of call themselves semantic layers. Uh, but those are actually not semantic layers. They're data virtualization. So they basically represent a bunch of databases. Now, they add value because they do federation across different databases, but they still expose the information as another database. So the data virtualization players typically do data virtualization, but then they don't have the semantics. Then you have data catalogs, right? Data catalogs sometimes also kind of position themselves as a semantic layer or a universal semantic layer. But a data catalog isn't really that. The data catalog catalogs the underlying tables in different databases, and then sometimes inherits some of the definitions of the different objects and descriptions that are in it. But you don't actually use a data catalog to build a semantic model. What makes us unique is that we do the data virtualization, we can connect to multiple databases. We allow you to actually define business semantics and a security model in our layer. We have an in-memory engine that allows us to actually do all the calculations on the fly. And it's really putting all of those things together that delivers this ability to connect to any source, calculate and do sophisticated enterprise level calculations and enterprise level security at different levels of granularity, and then serve that up to BI applications, productivity applications, and AI applications as well. The AI component of Mosaic really changes the game in a lot of different ways. Uh, if you think about semantics, uh, these were very difficult things to build historically, right? Because you have to basically connect to a bunch of different databases, grab the right tables, build join paths. You then have to, you know, give all of those attributes and metrics and dimensions and measures all the right names, okay? And the kind of people that know how to do database joins don't necessarily know how to name and describe the objects using business language, actually. So some of those skills, you need kind of different people to do that. You need to be able to figure out if there's anything wrong with the data and potentially prep the data and clean it up and do null detection and you know those kinds of things. Uh, and then finally, you've got yourself a model and you've described it and it's beautiful and you're good to go. But that can take hours and hours, days, weeks of effort in some cases. What we've done is automated it and sped it up by a factor of about 10, but 10x, by using AI to do all of those things, right? You grab the tables, we figure out if there's any data that needs to be cleaned up, we recommend improvements that you can make. We automatically do join detection, we automatically build the hierarchies, we give the attributes and dimensions, metrics and measures, all the right names, we auto-generate the descriptions, and then you've got yourself a model. And we think that the AI actually gets you like 80% of the way there, and the human can then go in and tweak and do all the final work. And it takes what was maybe 10 hours of work and reduces it down to you know, half an hour or an hour. Uh, and it just makes all that tedious stuff that's very error prone, much more automated. Uh, and it allows you to get from raw data and messy chaotic data to something organized and useful 10 times faster and or to do much more of it. So if you think about a semantic layer and what, Nomad, what, what Mosaic is really built to do, there's like the business definitions and the calculations. We'll put that aside for a second. But then there's the security model. And security needs to apl be applied at a whole bunch of different levels. You have to be able to apply it at the row level. So to be able to say that, you know, one person can access information in this country, another person can access it in another country, or they can see this region or this product and not that region or that product. So we've got role level security. We can define these very sophisticated security filters. You also want to be able to say uh, which objects, which columns of data that they can access. So for example, social security number or salary. Maybe only certain people in the organization should be able to see that. 
And then even after the fact in, in our sort of consumption tools, you can even specify what roles and privileges a user has so you can actually apply feature level security as well. So taking all of that together, it gives our customers a huge amount of control over who sees what data. Uh, and then they can surface that to AI and also make sure that the AI only sees and works with the information that it's supposed to see. One of the things that we designed Mosaic to do is to help you have cost arbitrage. Let's say that you've got data in some database or a number of different databases or different data warehouses. Those things cost you money. Now, you need to have cost arbitrage in a number of different ways. One is you need to be able to move from one to the other, right? If one database is significantly cheaper for your kinds of workloads than another, you should be able to move. Number two, you should be able to use data from different data systems, right? Because some might be cost optimized for certain kinds of scenarios, maybe operational scenarios, and otherwise, others might be optimized for, let's say, analytic scenarios. And you want to be able to use both of those, not have to consolidate everything into the lowest common denominator, right? And Mosaic allows you to do that because you can connect to all these different sources. And then finally, it actually gives you another level of cost arbitrage because we have an in-memory engine. And our pricing model is per user. It's not based on consumption. And so if you have, for example, um, a number of queries running on some underlying data warehouse, you could actually cache some of that in our in-memory engine, and now it'll hit our in-memory engine. And because we don't charge you on a consumption basis, you have a fixed cost for all of those queries, and you're no longer paying for all the hits that you're getting in the underlying database. And so when we think about total cost of ownership, it's all of these things together, right? It is uh, cost arbitrage across different vendors, on the database level. You get the ability to use multiple databases, optimize for what they're great at. You get to avoid uh, having to consolidate all your data into one place. And then you also get some cost arbitrage in terms of actually avoiding some of the queries hitting some of the more expensive databases. And of course, all of this is powered by AI, so you save a bunch of time and energy uh, in actually building these things and managing these things as well.